Good morning. Welcome home. I'm so glad to have everyone out this morning. So wonderful to see you. Uh, I'm excited to have this another opportunity to be in church today. I'd like to say welcome to Truth Baptist Church and welcome home. Uh, it's been a wonderful uh, time to be in the house of God already. I ha had a, a really enjoyable uh, Sunday school this morning. Uh, I spoke to Corey just a little while ago. The uh, first service this morning went very, very well. Uh, and, and I want everyone to know, uh, if you're not aware, uh, and especially those that are, are tuning in online right now, uh, we, we are having two services right now. We've got our first service, and that starts at 9 o'clock. Is that right? Our first service is at 9 o'clock, and that's going to be uh, focused on those uh, who are in, in the, uh, the, the more susceptible or the more uh, high-risk uh, age groups or, um, you know, or, uh, you know, with the health conditions, those who are most susceptible or are high-risk for, uh, you know, coronavirus being a, uh, a very risky or, or dangerous disease. So uh, we want to have that opportunity for those that might be worried about uh, you know, coming into contact with someone with the virus, come out and the 9 o'clock service, masks are 100% are required during the 9 o'clock service. So this whole, whole time that you're here, uh, as you come in, as you're seated, everyone... 100% suggested. 100% suggested. I'm sorry. 100% suggested. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. We, I should say that. We're not going to require or mandate that you do anything, but we would, we would highly encourage that. Thank you very much. Uh, but yes, we, we would highly uh, suggest and encourage that you do wear your masks and then if you come during the 9 o'clock hour uh, to protect those uh, that you know, are, are coming out and want to praise and worship God uh, but are, are worried about uh, and uh, uh, concerned about their health. And so if you don't know about the 9 o'clock service yet, now you know. And, uh, and if, you're, if you're worried about coming out, you're tuning in online right now, the 9 o'clock service is for you. And then between the services, we do uh, sanitize the sanctuary. And, of course, uh, you know, during the week and coming up, uh, you know, between Wednesday and Sunday, we sa sanitize uh, the sanctuary. So uh, don't be too worried about that. Um, now, I, I, I want to give a, a good opportunity this morning uh, for any testimonies or any prayer requests before we open up the service with, with prayer. And actually, let's do prayer requests first. If anyone has a prayer request this morning before I open up the service with prayer, uh, I want to give you the opportunity to let that be known. Wow. Absolutely. Yes. Any other prayer requests this morning? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Remember that. Any other prayer requests this morning? Absolutely. Yes. All right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to uh, to come into your house, God, to, to worship your holy name, to lift you high, to spread your word. Uh, Lord, we ask this morning, God, that you would be with each and every prayer request mentioned. Lord, be with those that are sick and afflicted, God, and uh, be with those that um, 
uh, Lord, that have experienced tragedy in their lives recently. Lord, we pray that you would uh, be with those families. God, that you would give them the peace that only you can offer. Uh, Lord, we pray, God, that you would be with especially those that are lost. Lord, and, and if there be one today, Lord, in this church who does not know you as their Lord and Savior, God, or, or perhaps someone t- uh, tuning in online this morning that does not know you as their Lord, God, I, I pray that today would be the day that they come to know you. I, I, I pray, God, that, uh, that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit, God, that you would uh, enable Christians today to, uh, to be uh, active, God, and to, to listen and to, uh, and to follow your will, Lord, so that they might do the, uh, the, the right things and say the right things, Lord, to make it through to that person that does not know you, God, to, that we might all just lift you high and praise your holy name, God, that we know that if we lift you up, that you will draw all men to yourself, God, and we'll just give you all the glory and all the praise for it, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, I, I don't have uh, any announcements this morning other than the announcement that I gave you last week, and that's that Jesus loves you. Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was growing up, I always just ha- had a feeling myself, I, I, I mean, probably y'all have it too, but that, the, that preachers tell you the same thing over and over and over. And I always used to wonder, like, hey, man, you, you told me that last week. Like, uh, preachers, I mean, they just, you, you hear the same thing over and over and over, and you want to know why? Because it's true. Uh, because last week uh, Jesus loves you, this week uh, Jesus loves you, next week Jesus loves you, and he's not going to stop. And, and in fact, uh, he doesn't love you just because of uh, the fact that you're here. He doesn't love you because of anything good that you've done in your life. And he doesn't love you because uh, uh, you're going to do something good later on. He loves you despite all, all that. And in fact, uh, hey, uh, Ben, Benjamin, look at me. Come up here. Come on. <laughs> Come on up. Don't be scared. <laughs> Come here. You see, Jesus loves you despite anything that you might have done or despite anything that you might have, have ever thought. And Jesus loves you despite your sins. Uh, Romans 5, 8. Would you care to quote that? Here, get in the microphone. Say Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8. But God. Command of his love toward us, and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. Good job. Good job. You see, while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. He commended his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, so we didn't do a single good thing. He knew we were never going to do a single good thing, and he still died for us. He knew about our sins, our shortcomings, our yeah, failures. We all have sins. Oh, he wants to do Romans 5, 23, too. <laughs> 3, 23. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Amen. Amen. He wants another one. All right. But we confess our sins, and he faithful in us to forgive us our sins. And cleanse us? From all unrighteousness. <laughs> and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Now, I, I do also, I, I would like to, to give a hand to the Sunday school teachers and the children's church uh, workers in this church, Vaughn and, and Sydney. I think they do a wonderful, wonderful job because every day Ben wants to do his Bible verses. And I, I, I'm really, really proud of the Sunday school teachers and the uh, children's church work, workers in this church. So give them a hand, a, a round of applause. Amen. All right, how about... We have a uh, congregational song this morning. If our lovely piano player would come, let's do Victory in Jesus. I don't have a book. It can go on the screen. That's all right. I know it.
have a, a, a testimony here this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I always just bring her treats to her meetings and all her things that I know her. And she would just call and go home and stop or be there to help her. And that really scares me. And yeah. so I'm just, I'm thankful for the time that we had with her and the fact that she shared so much with us and how she just, she was very, very moved with your faith in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless your heart, Alex. Anyone else have a, have a testimony this morning? Amen. 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 Bless your heart, Mom. Praise the Lord. Anybody else have a testimony this morning? Amen. Jennifer, would you come? She's been
I feel broke, and I'm thankful that I have a Savior who ain't afraid to take what's broken and make it new. Amen. We're going to go ahead and let the kids go down to Children's Church now if they if they want to. If not, they can stay up here with us. I promise you I am kid-friendly. You might have to you may have to do a little more explaining later. Uh, uh, yeah, an interpretation of some of the things that actually is said, but... Uh, I am kid friendly. I'm animated a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I do my best to give you all that I've got. And uh, I, when I played football, I, I 100% used my body, used my every bit of me to 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 uh, exert my will upon the opponent. And uh, I take take that uh, same uh, level of commitment into the pulpit. I do my best to exert the will of God onto his people. And I give my whole body to it. Amen. And I'm going to go home and sleep. Amen. I'm a, I got a chair already set up right beside of the grill. I'm going to put steaks on. I'm going to go to sleep for about 15 minutes. I'm going to wake up. You know what I'm talking about. I'm going to wake up, flip them, and then I'm going to wake up 15 more minutes later, and I'm going to eat them. Amen. Amen. And then, then about an hour and a half later, Sydney will get to eat hers because uh, it'll be burnt just like she likes it. Hey, ma'am, <clears throat> shoe leather. All right, now turn with me, if you will, the book of John chapter number 3. John chapter number 3. He loves the broken ones. Amen. Let's pray for some of the broken ones in our church right now. We've got some, some people who are going through some real trials, some tragedies. Uh, I got a phone call from Daniel Martin this morning. John is... Uh, mother passed away early this morning, uh, so please, please, please pray for them. And if you don't mind, send some type of text or message or card or whatever you can um, just to tell her um, that you're sorry. Um, 
for what they're going through. And pray for John. That's that that is um, Jonah's father. And uh, there's two things you need to know about uh, John. Jonah never did anything right, wrong, amen, in the eyes of John, and neither did Sandy. And uh, he loves those two women with all of his heart, so his heart's broken right now. We want to pray for him, and uh, we want to do something uh, pretty soon to uh, relief the, give them some relief and help. Uh, and I, I hope that you'd volunteer to, to help take care of that family right now. John chapter number 3. Over the last few months, I've been asking God, what do you want me to to uh, preach on? And and uh, and uh, I felt like that COVID-19, and I, he kind of led me to think about this, uh, COVID-19 was not a design for the world. It was a design for the church. It was a test, amen? It is a test for the church. Would you agree with me? It's a heart church. The church has been the one that's most tested. Amen. You, every Christian in the world has had to decide things that they never thought they had to decide. And they've taken for granted, every Christian has taken for granted the right to be able to, to assimilate together in the church of God. Amen. But now, now we're not taking that for granted now, are we? Amen. Matter of fact, this church is doing all that it can to help people get back in the church house again. And uh, we will continue to do so. And I, I, but my heart, uh, after looking at the state of, of what the church has become, and my heart is ran over the state of the church. You see, never before have we seen more inner church squabbles. When I say inner church squabbles, I don't mean this church now. No, I mean, we got our problems. Don't, I ain't going to lie to you. We got people who need to stay off the book of faces. Amen. Oh, sorry, sorry I'll, I'll be quicker with my scan. <laughs> Lord, help me. Remember, you love your preacher. <laughs> I think we all need a face break. Amen. Uh, my face is already broke. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, <laughs> we've never faced more problems within the body of Christ than ever before. More division, more conflict, more struggle, more strife. And what we need is a change. So over the last couple of months, I have been trying my best to talk about this change. And you might not have recognized it, but I have a central theme of all the messages that I've been preaching his name is Jesus. I have done everything I can to give a fresh glimpse of Jesus to this generation. I've did my best to open windows to allow you to see him like you've never saw him before and the outcome of what he's going to do in the life of every believer. But I asked God, I said, I, 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 I don't want to exhaust... <laughs> what you have want me to do, but I want to stay relevant to what is going on. I said, God, would you give me a relevant subject to preach on in this hour? And he led me in this direction. Now, God doesn't speak to me. If he speaks to you, I know we've got real problems that we need to sit down and really talk about. Matter of fact, we need to bring in some professionals. But God doesn't speak to me like that. He leads me in the right direction. He sends messages my way. He, he allows me to read the Bible and the Bible read me. Amen? And when it was reading me, it, it, it decided that, it, that I needed this and that my church needed this and that all the churches in America needs to hear this because we have an issue with self. Amen? Amen? You see, it's hard, it is hard to glorify the Savior when you have <laughs> glamorified self. I know some of you don't know what glamorified really is, but I got introduced to it early in life. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 90s kid, amen? I, I was born in the 80s, I experienced the 80s, but I know the 90s. In the late 80s, early 90s, there's a place called Kmart. Now, y'all y'all don't know, you young people, y'all don't know what Kmart really is because it's retired now, amen? Praying that it might be the, church, the, the future Church of Truth Baptist Church, amen? Who knows? If it is, we are opening back up the Kmart Cafe, amen? 
Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Amen. But in there, there was a little little little, little area that everybody uh, got their pictures made at at Christmas and everything. Well, they 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 were struggling and they need some help, and they they developed a concept that would eventually come outside of Kmart and go all over the country, and it's called glamour shop. Now, I know some of you don't understand what Glamour Shots is. Let me explain this. Stoney, let me explain to you what Glamour Shots are. You and your luscious mullet. Praise God. I want to sing achy, breaky heart every time I look at him. But we, uh, <laughs> Glamour Shots, Stoney. Glamour Shots are, are, are the Instagram filters of yesteryear. It can beautify the ugly, amen. So what happens is somebody takes their little 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 little, kid, little girl in there, and I don't want to get too too pushy now, but she may not be the most gorgeous girl in the world. But they bring her into glamour shots and they pamper her a little bit. They get that four inch uh, uh, putty knife and they begin to apply that uh, that makeup on there, and they make her look all different. Then they go to aisle number nine and they get one of them teasing combs and they go, sounds like a helicopter on top of her head. Boom. And they don't leave aisle nine yet. They got to get the Aquanet. Amen. The most powerful substance known to man. If you buy Aquanet, it can launch a potato a quarter of a mile. Trust me. And they spray that on there. And the hair is just And now it could face A stage 5 hurricane And not move Y'all know what I'm talking you, you, you old people I know I had Aquanet That stuff was good You know what we used Aquanet for in, in college we, We'd paint a picture And we'd spray Aquanet on it It'd be a clear coat Nothing would come off ever again Amen That's free uh, But they they take a picture and you think the pit that's all over. They've, they've, they've made her face up. They've made her hair up. They got her in a nice dress. There she is. Boom. But no, they begin to manipulate the picture and they put this hue around her. They soften all the edges to focus in on her new perfection. And they've glamorified her. She's a different person than she walked in. And I started thinking about the state of the church. The state of Christianity today, the state of those who proclaim to be Christian. I've noticed something. We're glamorified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about dipping ourselves in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and coming out a different person. I'm talking about we have made other people see us differently. Mm-hmm. We have become so enamored with self that we put off a self-portrait to other people that is different than who we truly are. That girl did not go in there like that. That girl did not act like that. That girl did not look like that. Listen, that girl, she was, she was uh, perfect in all of her ways before she went in there. She was a broken down mess. Uh, she was probably hurt. They probably dragged her out of a mud pit before they came. And she had a ponytail pulled up high and she was wearing sweatpants. But when she got into the glamour world, she changed. She didn't need to change. She just needed to be herself. You see, whenever you're not yourself, you're a faker. And I said, Lord God, I can't preach that. This is a Baptist church. They ain't going to like that at all. I go somewhere else and preach that. He said, preach it, son. And I said, yes, sir. <clears throat> you see, we need to see a decrease in the glamification of the church today. We need to strip down the six-inch worth of lacquer that we've placed over our faces and peel back the aquanet for a minute, take a shower, honey, and look like who we are. Because even in our brokest state, we are, we are something to be desired. But we won't know that as long as we're increasing ourselves. He said, we need to decrease. So for the next three weeks, I'd like to preach on this topic, decrease. 
So if you would st- join me in the reading of God's Word in John chapter number 3 as we look at a life that exemplifies a decreased nature. And if you would stand for the reading of God's Word, the Bible says this and these, or after these things, came Jesus and His disciples in the land of Judea. And, and, he tarry, and there He tarried with them and baptized. Hmm. I thought that was John's job. Hmm. And John also was baptizing in Anon, near the Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, and John was not yet cast into prison. So John, the writer of John, is assuming that people know, and he's trying to understand, or let them understand the time period that he's writing in. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and between the Jews about purifying. And they came to John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, Hmm. underline that, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man cannot receive nothing, Except it give, it's given to him from heaven. Ye yourself bear witnesses that I said I am not the Christ, but I, that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Now underline this, put your face on it, get the tattoo, I don't care, you need it. The Bible says this, and he must, say it with me, increase. But I must, let's say it together, decrease. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we pray that you take your Bible and you begin to spin it in our hearts and in our minds and begin to create create in your Lord and and you knock away some of the stones that have been built up by Satan and his sins and and we begin to see a newness of life again and we realize that if we really want to see happiness if we will really want to see joy if we really want to experience you we need to decrease in ourselves and allow you to increase in our lives Lord I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin fill me with your spirit today Lord I ask you God together in this Super Bowl hour that we would leave no doubt. I love you, Lord, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. And you must and you may be seated. <clears throat> we find here a division that has taken place. The division is this the the beginning church is established in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a transitioning church that began with John. And these two are existent at once. There's one that's going to baptize in water. And then there's, there's going to be one who baptizes in the blood. Amen. And something changes. And there, there is, a, there is this, this, this time period of separation between two major ministries taking place. Now, when two major ministries take place, there is a division that is taking place. And and a and what we see here is what is called in the modern times denominationalism. There is the one who baptizes with water, and there is the one who is going to baptize with the blood. Amen. And now they've met here together. But John does not quit. He does not allow denominationalism to rise its ugly head. Mm, in our day and hour, this is the time to squash the denominations. Those things that are separating the Christian church from each other. And he says this, we were divided, but let me tell you this. Uh, John answered and said unto them, a man cannot receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. If it's God sent, you can't talk about it. Amen? Amen? Mm. But then he quickly moves on from denominationalism to the real crux to the problem. You see, the problem wasn't so much of the action. It was of the man. You see, 
they were married to a man, not, and they failed to see the ministry of the man. And there is the problem with division in churches. We have allowed churches to marry men. Listen, we, in the 1600s, we allowed men to become leadership so much that we have entire movements named after those men. If they prove it to me. What? You ever heard of Calvin? What about Wesley? What about Luther? We've allowed these men's name to be attached to something that should only be reserved for the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't come to preach on that. I just wanted you to know. We need to get right. Mm -hmm. You see, because if it's mandated from heaven, we need to get on board with heaven. Oh, you say, what what does that mean? If they're preaching the gospel message, we need to be in brotherly love. That's free. That has nothing to do with what I'm going to say. But what I want you to understand is is that that John understood who he was. He understood who he was, and he understood how they acted towards him. They acted towards him as if he was the Messiah. But he said unto them, um, I am not him. I am not the Messiah. He said, ye yourselves as bear witness that I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. This verse leads us to some questions that needs to be answered before we can go on. The first question is this, when did this witnessing take place? Well, in John chapter number 1, verse number 19 through 34, we find a portion of Scripture where the Jews come on out to see him baptize. Here's John out there baptizing in the river. And here's Jesus standing in the congregation. You see, six weeks before this, the dove had ascended on him and God made a proclamation. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then Jesus was tempted. But now Jesus is standing in the crowd. And here's what John said. He said, uh, they asked him, they said, they said, tell us about your, your identity. Who are you? Are you the Messiah? Are you, are you the one who is sent? Are you, are you Moses? Are you a great leader? What are you? Who are you? Then they asked him uh, not only about his identity but his ideology. And he said, the, and he said this uh, about the whole thing in verse number 23 of chapter number 1. He says, he said, I, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Elias. He said, I'm just a voice. I'm not him. <laughs> you said, what are you saying? I'm saying this. He understood who he was. Then, then, he, then they said, well, well, then the question would have to be, well, if they were witnesses, what did, exactly did they witness? Well, in a summary, he says this, that you witness that I'm not the Christ, but I'm the one who had been sin. I'm just a, just a voice. In fact, he said in, in chapter number 1, he said, John answered and said unto them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you who, who ye know not. He it is who has come after me, is preferred before me, whose shoes I can't even latch. But then he goes on. Here's what he says. He said, the next day. That's all in one day. Here's another day. The next day. So he knows that he's standing there. The day's over, and then we see Jesus disappeared. The crowd disappeared, and then here's John out there getting back to work, standing in the river preaching the sermon. You must, be, you must repent of your sins and be baptized to be saved. Here it is, and then here comes Jesus. And the Bible says this in verse 29 of chapter 1. He says, And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. <laughs> this is he whom said, After me er, cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come to baptize with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven as the dove, and like and, uh, and, and it above upon him and, and abode upon him and I knew him not and he that sent me to baptize with water the same sinned unto me upon whom thou shalt uh, uh, see the spirit descending and remaining upon him the same which baptized with the Holy Ghost amen the blood and the ghost and I saw and bear record this this son or this is the son of God you say what has happened John understood 
understood his place. He was just a voice. He was just somebody crying in the wilderness, preparing the way. He had his weed eater out, just cutting down vines left and right, saying this is the pathway to Jesus. I'm clearing it out so that he can come find you. Then he calls himself, not the bride. No, 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 no. He doesn't even call himself the groom. He compares himself to the best man. <laughs> I was like, what, what? You see, he understood his position. And because he understood his position, he understood that in verse number, and, and said it in verse number 30, he said, I got to decrease. Because you're seeing me as somebody that I'm not. And I want you to see You see, you got to recognize this. The best man isn't supposed to be in the front. He's supposed to stand by the one who's waiting on the bride to come down. And so we see that, 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 that he said this. He said basically, uh, he said, I'm not the one who is getting married, but I am the one who's going to be in the wedding party. I found this to be true. We need less men that are trying to be the groom and having people marry them. That's the problem with the local church is we have too many men who have putting the, put themselves unbeknownst to them in the place of Jesus and people have married them and do not understand the ministry. Mm. And churches are falling because of this. In fact, even worse than that, we've, we find that, that more people today are going to hell than at any other portion in time in history. You say, why? It's because we don't have a best man. You, you see, more church, people are leaving churches left and right. And you say, why? It's because we do not have a, a, the, the, a best man who stands beside the groom. You, you see, over 3,700 churches are closing its doors every year. And you say, why? It's because men have replaced the, themselves over in where the groom is supposed to be when all they're supposed to do is sit there with the ring in their hand, um, fiddling it back and forth in, un, in, their, mm, in their pockets scared to death that they're going to drop it in the handoff. That's all they're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need some increase in Christ. But before he can increase, we have to decrease. We. You wonder why the church is falling into an apostate state. It is because the church has increased itself and it decreased the Savior. And I believe this, that every person under the sound of my voice will realize that they want, they want to be the best man too when they understand the simplicity of what it takes to be the best man. You see, because the job of the best man is the easiest job of all. You see, you don't have to worry about locking your legs when you're the best man and falling right past, amen. You don't have to just sit there on go, afraid that somebody's going to see you and you're going to fall over, amen. You don't have to worry about tripping over your, over your gown on the way down the aisle. You don't have to work, listen, you don't even have to be, be the mother-in-law and worry about everything being in its right spot and living vicariously through your daughter. You're supposed to be the best man. You say, preacher, how do I become the best man? I'm going to give you one point and we'll go home. You ready for this? Listen real close. You want to be the best man. To be the best man, you have to be a friend of the groom. Oh, yeah. You prove it to me, preacher. I'd be glad to. Look at verse 29 of John chapter number 3. It says, And he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But look at this. He said, But the friend of the bridegroom. He said, You want to fulfill the desires of being the best man at the wedding? You just have to be a friend to him. <laughs> you said, What does it look like? To be a friend to the groom. How do I become a friend to the groom? Here, here it is. Stand with the groom. The Bible says, But the friend of the groom, the bridegroom, which standeth, 
just stands. A friend always stands with his friend. You see, the Proverbs says, and, and a man that hath a friend uh, must show him first, or himself first friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let me ask you this question. How's your sticky? How's your sticky? Are you sticking closer than a brother? Because that's what a best man's supposed to do. You see, but I found out something, Brother Trevor. I found out something to be true about friends. Not all friends are ride or die. Some will only stay with you as long as the money is in your pocket. Oh, yeah. Me and Sydney first got married. We had a slew of friends that would come over. Sydney can cook. I can cook. And, and, and uh, I had a really good job. And she, you know, I, I kept it. I kept the food there. She kept cooking it. This is before I showed her my skills. Amen. <laughs> she would cook it. And they would come over and they'd eat. And they'd sit there. And, and this is before I, apparently I was saved because they'd drink the Pepsi out of the refrigerator. But thank Brother Jim, I got saved, sealed, and delivered, and I only go for the red can. Amen. I've been dipped in the red can. And I believe this, that at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the red can will be present. <laughs> but that was a, I was a blue can fan. I was a sinner. <clears throat> and... Uh, <laughs> So I, we would drink that and Dr. Pepper and, and everybody would sit there and they'd eat my food and, 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 and drink my drinks and leave my house a mess and they'd stay till 3 o'clock and I'd have to be at work at 4 o'clock and, and here we are. And, and then I got laid off. First time I've ever been laid off in my life. If you've, ever, if you've never been laid off in your life, the first time's the worst time. Because... If you've experienced it before, you understand, one, that the state of West Virginia is going to help you out for a little while while you're looking. I didn't know that. Matter of fact, it took me two weeks to go sign up because I didn't know that. Yeah, unemployment. Who knew? <laughs> you know what my unemployment was for the first two weeks? I had some friends who called me and said, Hey, I know you, I, I know you lost your job, but if you come cut my grass... I, got, I can help you out a little bit. And I had a couple other friends that would say, hey, man, I could, I, I've got a new job, and I used to cut grass for this lady and this lady and this lady. And he walked me around and introduced me to everybody. And when I was laid off for two weeks until the, the other money kicked in, I had a friend who gave me work to do. It was a real friend. You know where the guys were who ate my food, slept on my couch? They were at their mom and dad's house eating their mac and cheese. You say, what happened? They weren't ride or die. Mm. <laughs> you see, when suffering comes, you find out who's rolling with you. Now, we can agree that some of those jokers aren't my friends. But let's make it applicable to your life Romans 8 says this 18 it says for I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us when suffering comes how do you react do you re react sticky or Do you turn into rubber, not glue? And you bounce off to him to find something new. Oh, whoa, yeah. Oh, we're getting. See, I told you. God, I didn't want to preach this. It got tight in here already. You see, the reason why it's so tight is we recognize how selfish we are. We want to ride or die with Jesus as long as it's good to us. But he, but when suffering comes along, when pain is admonished in our life, whenever we feel something different, we want to quit. When somebody says it's dangerous to do this, we don't want to be like a fireman and go into the danger. We want to be like the patron who runs away. Our commitment level. To Christ 
Where's it at? Is it sticky? Huh. Let's go on. Preach, preach, preach. Please go on. I can't handle that one. He, but there's an and. He says this standeth. And then he, he says this. And heareth him. Oh, oh. I, must I come back to my sheep story from last Sunday? John says this. In John chapter number 10, it was actually Jesus who said it. John just wrote it down. He says, this, my, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Aren't you thankful that you could be a sheep this morning, and, and, he, and you could hear his voice and follow him? But look what it says. It says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall, pe- shall never perish. Neither shall any of them pl- be plucked, or pl- neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. See? But I found this to be the problem. We only listen when it's beneficial to us. I heard a story, and I, I don't know if it was a preacher, if I read it in a book or something. It's not in the gospel, <laughs> amen. But it is a story about Jesus, and I don't know if it's, it's, if it's true or not, but it sounds good, so I'm going to tell it, all right? Um, it's a parable, if you will. It's about Jesus and Peter. The story goes like this. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, hey, guys, uh, we're going on a journey. I want you to get a rock, and I want you to pick up that rock, and I want you to carry it with you. Well, you know, Thomas, he doubted. <laughs> Judas, he's trying to collect everything. Everybody's rocks. Amen. You, know, you, get, you give me 10% of your rock. You give me 10% of your rock. Oh, you get, sorry, that's a Baptist joke. Um <laughs> And then there's Peter. Peter was a smart one. Peter said, man, I don't know how long he's going to make me walk. And I don't know where he's going to make me walk to. I don't know the terrain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pick up the smallest rock I can find. And Brother Abel, he picked up a little rock and put it in his pocket. He's smart, isn't he? Well, over the river and through the woods, you're going to finish it? To grandmother's house we go. And, and uh, he went over there, and here's Jesus. He, 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 everybody's gathered together, and he goes, Are you guys hungry as I am? And they said, Yeah. And he said, Look, he said, get all, everybody get your rocks out. And they get their rocks out, and he goes, Look at it. Everybody, rock turned into bread. And here's, here's, here's Thomas. He had none because <laughs> he doubted. Here's John, this mighty man who wanted to do everything to please Jesus and be able to stand at the right hand of him or sit with him in, at the right hand. And he, he just desired to be just like Jesus. And he said, he said, look how big my loaf of bread is. And then here's Peter with his little cracker. Thank you, Jesus. Mmm. Mmm. Y'all ever heard, heard a person who just so satisfied with the taste? Mmm. Sound like Scooby Doo eating a Scooby snack. Mmm. And he's like, he said, man, that is so good. Now Jesus said, all right, we're going to finish our journey. He said, grab a rock. <laughs> Thomas is still doubting. <laughs> he don't get anything. John's like, all right, I'll, I'll get the same size rock. This is okay. It was awesome. <laughs> he had rock enough to spare. But then there's Peter. He said, oh, I am not going to be hungry at the end of this. And he gets this big giant stone, and he's carrying this big giant stone. And he's walking around, and he's, he's trying to keep up, and he just can't keep up. And finally, over the river and through the woods, and they come to the brookside. And Jesus goes, all right, guys. And 15 minutes later, here comes Peter carrying this boulder on his head. He said, Peter, nice, <laughs> nice stone. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Is it time to eat? (laughs) Jesus says, hey, everybody, that stone that you were carrying, throw it in the river. Now here's here's Thomas. He's like, whew, throwing in nothing. (laughs) John, big splash. And here's Peter. You know, he gets the, the mad, so mad, he's sucking back tears. Y'all ever been that mad? <laughs> a little, little vein popping out. He goes, <laughs> and the ocean liner sinks because he threw his rock in. And he goes, Jesus, I just got one question. Why? Y'all ever done that? Why? And 
He said, why is it that while earlier you made our stones into food, but now that I'm hungry and famished and I had little before, and, and, and now why is it that you make this stone castawayable? That's a new word. Jesus said, before I ask you to carry it, and you carry little, this time I ask you to carry with a different intent in mind, and you carried much. He said, let me ask you this question, Peter. Who was you carrying for? He said, you were carrying for yourself. And mm, listen, I wonder tonight, this morning, who are you carrying this for? You see, a lot of us are carrying things around that are heavy that he told us to cast in. And a lot of us are carrying around very little trying to survive on it. But. If we empty of ourself, of ourselves, and fill ourselves with Christ, things began to change. You see, our viewpoint, our vantage point begins to change. And, and Jesus said this about all this. He said, wherefore, in Matthew chapter 7, wherefore, uh, by their faults, you see, you shall, or by their fruits, you shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm, Man, that's some harsh words by Jesus you hear. But it gets better because he starts talking about preachers here in a second. But he that goeth or doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm, That's who's going in. But there's there's more to it, a precursor. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name and and cast out devils in thy name and and, and have done many works in thy name? And he said, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You say, why will he say depart? Because you did it for yourself. You see, we've got a lot of people these days that are traveling around with little stones in their pocket afraid that somebody will recognize that they got a little stone in their pocket and that's all they've been feeding themselves on. And then we got the other crowd that stays on Facebook and, and they like to give with their big giant stones above their head and they like to proclaim that they are the greatest Christian of all time. But I say this and I say it true. You better hear me when I say this. Listen, we need to empty ourselves of ourselves and fill ourselves with Christ. Why? Because it ain't about us, honey. It's about Him. You see, all we're supposed to be doing is standing and listening. Here's the last thing. He said, Rejoice greatly because the bridegroom... Oh, we're supposed to do, Brother Skip. Stand with him, listen to what he says, and rejoice with him when he gets married. Yeah. You say, well, you say what's that? Look, <laughs> you say, what are you saying? I'm saying this. I'm saying just like Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always and again. <laughs> always. If that wasn't big enough, he said, and again. I'm telling you, just rejoice. Why? Why do we need to rejoice? Because we're, it's not our wedding, it's somebody else's. Do we rejoice when it's, let me ask you this question, do we j- rejoice when it's not about us? See, that's the problem. We all want to rejoice when it's about us. But when it's about somebody else, we have problems with that. Man, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I hate weddings. I, I I told the, the group this morning, I said, <laughs> let me confess my sins. I hate weddings. Amen. I, I don't know why. I just, I'm just not a big fan. I think the main reason why is because there's always somebody in the auditorium on the day before the wedding who thinks it's their wedding and won't shut up. Even if the pastor gets up there and goes, hey, you know who this lady is? She's the bride. She's the one who's supposed to talk. Amen. You always got that one. I think it would be better if you did it this way. That lady's annoying, all right? <laughs> There's not very men who do that. <laughs> but that woman, she's annoying. <clears throat> Anyways, but my favorite weddings have been the weddings with the animated, the animated, invested best man. 
the best man who was just always been with his friend and was so excited that his best friend was getting married to the love of his life. That's the, that is the, my favorites. You know why? Because men are knuckleheads, especially young men. Amen? They're all knuckleheads, and they get excited. And, yeah, amen. You see that over there? Knucklehead. Am. You see, you got, the, you got the groom here, you got the bride over there, and you got the best man. And the best man does some funny stuff. I've been to, to, to them where nobody in the auditorium cries. The, the, you think that the, that the, the, the man's going to cry, the woman's going to cry, the preacher's going to cry, somebody in the room's going to cry, but no, it's the best man. I've been in that one. It's so funny. He's like, <laughs> I don't know why he's so emotional, but maybe it's because he really loved her and she didn't love him back. She loved his best friend. I don't know. And then you've, I've been there where the, the man become the curator of the whole, whole operation. And he, 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 was so, he was so into it. He was like, there, it's perfect. I've been to that wedding. That was a little bit touchy. Um, and then there was the, the wedding of the, the, guys who were, the guy who was so invested that he talked trash. And that's, that was my favorite one because I joined with him to make fun of him. And I go, I, like I told Pass, I said, don't lock your legs. <clears throat> Amen. Good advice. If you lock your legs, you're going to fall over. AJ, listen to me. In 50 years, when you're allowed to be married, all right, don't lock your legs. And he locks it. He's sitting there like, hey, buddy, kept my keys in my pocket. I'm putting them in yours. You make a run for it. I'll hit every person in the way out. We'll get out of here. Y'all, y'all know what that, 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 that's a friend, amen? And he knows nothing's going to happen. He's just picking on his buddy, trying to relieve some tension. He's fully invested in what's going on. But my favorite one, I was doing one in Clay County. <laughs> oh, man. And I, <laughs> it was a good one. I mean, the groom, he was a cowboy. He had on cowboy boots, Wrangler jeans, a button-up shirt tucked in to a massive belt buckle that he won riding Broncos. This is cool. And he wore a tan hat. He come in the, the night before, and we were getting all this stuff together, and I go, you bring me a hat. I'll marry you in a cowboy hat. He said, no, for real. I said, yeah, man. I kid you not, before we got up there, I looked at him. I said, she ain't going to want to kiss you with that skull in your mouth. Amen. Took this big old chunk hog leg and threw it out. (laughs) Put his hat on. Handed me a cowboy hat. Brother Jim, I put it on. I'm standing here. We get to the best part. This is where everybody's waiting. So you see, because for the bride and the groom, it's that exciting cultivation of their, their newly married. And, newly married. And, 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 and for everybody else, it's, the, it's like the dinner bell. It's, all right. I said, by the powers vested in me by the state of West Virginia, that's what it told me to say in the little star book. And then I added this. And by God himself, you may kiss the bride. And here it is. He lays one on her, bends her over, (laughs) slaps it down. And my dude over here, full cowboy boots, grabs his belt, flips his hat in the air and says, like a grandma in a Pentecostal church, excited. And I said, oh, this is fun. I just started thinking about that. Mm. I started thinking about John. Mm, there he is. He looked like Jim Jeffrey. Got that scruffy build, beard in it. Got a little bit of honey still stuck in there. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. He's sitting there. He's sitting there, and he says, "Jesus, um, <laughs> Jesus, uh, if you want to get out of here, um, uh, I know, I know, she's a little bit different. She's a little bit awkward. That church, she's a little bit messed up. She's a little bit broken down. I seen who she used to be, and he's just messing with it because he prepared the way he." 
was crying out in the wilderness. And, and here he is just standing there looking around. And he says, if you want to leave, we'll leave together. I promise. And he said, no, nah, no, nah, I'll stay. I'll stay. And he says, okay, I, I just can't wait. And he, he goes, hold on, let me make this right over here. And he begins to fix something over here. And he begins to fix something over there. And he's, he says, it's, it's all ready. Play the song. And here he is standing there in his robe of white and his big, long, thick beard like a man, ape man, and his cowboy hat. And he sits there and he, he, he sees the bride of Christ as it comes down the down the down the, that, that walkway of glory and here's Jesus standing there all stoic with nail prints in his hands and he sees as, as his lovely bride comes down there adorned in white for the first time in her life and she comes stammering up there and she says she, she stands there nervously shaking and here's Jesus with all the confidence in the world and here stands John with tears falling down out of his face and he says I remember the time I set you guys up. I remember when I told you, Jesus, that if you went down there and you talked to them about you and you told them how good you are, that they'd fall in love with you like I did. And he said, I remember the night I set you guys up. I let you borrow my car. I let you go down there. I told you where to eat at. I gave you some money in your pocket. I remember that time, Jesus. And he sits there. <laughs> Looks like a Kardashian. She's crying so hard. And he's and here's, here's the church. Here's Jesus. And here's God. He says, Do you love her? I love her so much that I'd die for her all over again. Say, I do. I do. You always got to tell the groom he ain't got a clue. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> he died for me. He gave it all up for me. I got to. I couldn't do anything. He's so awesome. He's so wonderful. Look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> Can I have the rings? I'm having fun. Y'all, y'all, if y'all was at this wedding party with me, y'all would know. <laughs> there they are. He says, now by the powers vested in me, <laughs> by all of heaven and all of glory, <laughs> and by me, the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, because there is no other, I am. <laughs> he said, Jesus, you may kiss the bride. He bends his church over. <laughs> And just gives her one. Hey, man. And then, here's John. Woo! You see, he's rejoicing over the newlyweds, the church, and the Lord Jesus Christ because he sacrificed himself for a moment to invest in that relationship. There was rejoicing in heaven over that. We had a little girl get saved a couple of weeks ago. It was the most amazing thing. People said, Preacher, why do you wear a mask? Why do you wear a mask in a store? Because I'm not scared of it. But I want to make sure that those who are knows their pastor ain't afraid to put on a mask to come talk to me. So here she comes. And I come down, I'm like, where's my mask? I said, Lord, I ain't been around nobody without one. I ain't been nowhere. Cover me. Y'all ever done that? Cover me. I'm going in. And I got down there and I began to talk to her and tell her about Jesus. And she said she wanted to be saved. And she gave her heart to Jesus. And another boy over here and some other people at the altar. And people gave their heart to Jesus. And we were like, hey, guys, some people gave their heart to Jesus. Isn't that cool? That's awesome, right? You assisted in the marriage of lost people to Christ. And all you can do is. When do we eat? You see because it ain't about you. There's no joy. 
John says, Woo! We should be rejoicing over the fact that we have a church that's still seeing people saved in the middle of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't see it because we're, we have become so scared that we want to preserve ourselves then sacrifice ourselves for the glory of God. I say this. I come this morning to ask you to be the best man at the wedding of Jesus and his church. I don't know about you, but I do want to be a part of it. And I don't have to do much. I just have to stand where he tells me to stand. Listen to what he wants me to hear and rejoice over somebody getting saved. But it's going to have to take me saying it ain't about me anymore. It's about him. With every head bowed and every eye closed and nobody looking around, let me ask you this. Are you his friend this morning? Are you his friend? Are you his friend? Because if you're his friend, you're going to stand with him through thick and thin. You're going to listen to him when it, even, when it ain't even about you. And you, my friend, will learn to rejoice in knowing that there are other people going to heaven with you. If you're here today and you say this, preacher, you know what? I, that heaven that you're talking about, that marriage that you're talking about, you know, I've never experienced what it's like. I, know, I don't know if I've ever been saved, but I sure would like to know. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved or I don't really know, I'm not really sure. I would like to be sure and know that I, my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to know that, I, that I've given my heart to Jesus. Will you pray for me? Or I would like to know more about it. Here's my hand. Will you pray for me, Preacher? Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I want to raise my hand. And say, preacher, will you pray for me that I could decrease in myself and increase in him? Amen. I see that hand. Anyone else? Yes, yes. I could decrease. I could come over. I could overcome my fear that face myself. And I could stand with him. I can hear what he says, and I can rejoice with him. So many people this morning have raised their hand, and I ask you to do this. How about we sacrifice ourselves, step out of our seat, come down to this altar? Won't you come? These have come. How about you? Won't you come? Come down to this altar and you begin to call out to God and say, I'm here to stand beside of you, Jesus. I'm here to do and hear what you called me to do. I'm here to rejoice in knowing that you saved my sins and the sins of others. Why don't you come? These are still coming. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Oh, if we could put ourselves to the side for a moment and grab on and stick with the Savior. He's my friend that sticks closer than a brother. Won't you come? Won't you come? Yeah. Yeah.
Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I thank you for loving us, caring about us. And Lord, I want to be one of those best men to tell people about you. That live sacrificially for you. So that I can rejoice knowing that another one come to know you. I'm thankful also that I get to be a part of that bride who walks down that aisle. Oh, Lord, you're wonderful. I pray that you'd continue to move and bless. Lord, we just want to do what's right and seek you first. And we ask you that you just add. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've had a good time here this morning. Both services we had, um, I didn't tell you this because I'm well, I don't know about I don't know if y'all know this but I get locked in I, I say a lot to but I'm getting locked in that's just me lock it in all right but um, we had a, about 14 people this morning some of which had have been here but you know got nervous and didn't come back and then we've had some that has haven't been to church in in months now and man was it awesome to see yeah, we had about 14 people 11 of which came to the altar, and um, that's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. Um, now, uh, I do ask this. It, it, we're going to need some singers that they don't want me to sing to them. So if, if at all possible, if you feel comfortable with it, uh, coming to a 9 o'clock service and singing every now and then, just let Chris or I know. Also, we're going to be doing some new things with our music ministry. We're at least an 11, uh, 11.05 hour. Um, I want you to send me or Chris a list of all the songs that you sing because we're going to try to mix some things up, all right? We're not going to be one singer services. We're going to try our best to move towards scheduling you for a song, okay? We're going to see how this works. We're going to let Chris get creative put some song mashups together and just make a playlist amen you know whatever it takes and we're just going to we're, we're, we're going to make some movement in the church and see what happens just be different y'all 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 okay with being different yeah I'm, we're going to be special preacher we're going to be real special um <coughs> yeah, <laughs> um but I do want to remind you of something new that we've been doing for a little while. Um, it's called Wednesday Night Church Service. Just thought I'd throw that out there. And on um, August the 30th, I have not got this on the calendar. Miss, Miss Nikki sent me a message to remind me, and I appreciate that. Um, on August the 30th, in both services, we're going to do what's called Step Up Sunday. And Step Up Sunday is we've got some kids that are going to be stepping up whenever they're comfortable and going into a new Sunday school class. Um, they'll be stepping up from nursery to preschool, preschool to first grade-ish. I don't know. Then, you know, every two years there'll be somebody jumping, all right? And, and then once you get in the teen room, you're there for 27 years, all right? All right. Um, but we're going we're gonna to do that. It's called Step Up Sunday, and we want to honor those kids, and we'll, we'll figure out what we got to do. If we got to put a white table down there and slide it to them, you know, like a bartender. <coughs> Preacher, you're not supposed to say that. But we are looking for people that will be willing to even work the sound on uh, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, maybe volunteer once in a while. And, and that would also help Jason out. He can schedule you on maybe a Wednesday and he could sit with his wife. Wouldn't that be a concept? The man gets to sit with his wife during church. All right, Brother, Brother Daniel's going to come in the church service with us or for us. I'm going to go change shirts because this one's getting to be transparent. We really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, it was a wonderful message. Uh, one of the uh, most interesting uh, uh, illustrations that out of hearing Corey preach for like 12 years now, it's a, it was a good one, uh, but uh, really, uh, really important illustration to keep in mind. Uh, I, I remember uh, one, one of the first times that I ever preached, I was scared to death, and I, I don't even know what I, what I said, 
but there were some kids that got saved that night. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with the fact that God was there. And there was this, uh, the pastor of the church there was way, way, way back at a holler in uh, 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 Doniger uh, uh, in Clay County. And uh, uh, the preacher there is this red-haired guy who was loud. No matter what he did, he was loud. And I'm up there still scared to death. Like I had preached for like five minutes, and there was a kid getting saved. It was his daughter. And this guy, I mean, let down, praise the Lord. And I, I was already about to fall over. I just about fell off. It was, I was preaching from the back of a trailer. Uh, but I just about fell off the trailer. I, I would love to see that kind of energy. When somebody gets saved, there should be some excitement. There should be uh, some energy in the church because that, that is a soul that is taken away from Satan forever. Uh, that, that is a soul who never has to experience the fire of hell. And that is what it's all about. It was a wonderful place to be this morning. If, if you're here today or if you're tuning in online and, and you have been saved, if you were saved today, if you've been saved a while back, uh, I'm sure you might have questions. And uh, the church, uh, the pastors uh, especially, put together a, a book for you. It, it deals with a lot of the, the basic questions, a lot of the, uh, the, the most, um, I guess, kind of the, the foundational principles uh, of Christianity that you need to know. Uh, what salvation is about, what the Holy Spirit is about, what baptism is about, what what church membership is about, and then, uh, and of course, you might have follow up questions to these, and and, and we're happy to hear any questions that you have. Uh, if Corey is, I am, Chris is. Uh, we're, we're happy to take any questions and do our best to answer them. And sometimes we might tell you that we don't know and we need to go study it. And, and we'll definitely try to come back and give you an answer. But uh, uh, we encourage you to, if you uh, would like to, come on up, get one of these books, take it home and read it and come back with, uh, with more questions. Uh, but uh, excited for everyone that's here this morning and excited for our 9 o'clock service. Y'all be in prayer for Corey. Uh, it, it's a lot to preach uh, twice in uh, you know, a four-hour or so period. Uh, so be much in prayer for him, and, and if you're willing to, you know, ask him, hey, how can I help out in that 9 o'clock service? Because I'm sure there's something that you can do. Uh, all hearts and minds clear this morning. Amen. Let's pray and to be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for uh, all that you've done for us. God, we thank you for this time that we have to, to be in your house, to, to worship your holy name. And God, I pray, Lord, that uh, you would just keep this message uh, fresh in our minds and fresh in our hearts, God, as we continue on throughout our day and, and throughout the week. God, let us uh, always remember to, that, that, that we must decrease and you must increase. God, let's, let's not make our, our lives about ourselves, but make it all about you, Lord, that at work we would lift you up, God, and uh, at home that we would lift you up. And as we uh, speak to our friends and family members and our neighbors, God, that we would always glorify you and lift you up and spread your word. And it's in Jesus' blessed name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.